this confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God the still inside the storm the promise of the shore I trust the power of your word enough to seek your kingdom first barren place beyond the ocean waves when I walk through the water I won't be overcome when I go through the rivers I will not be drowned my God will make a way so I am not afraid Says you made. There isn't one that is delayed, so I will not lose heart. Here I will lift my arms and start to sing into the night. My praise will call the sun to rise. Declare.
Hallelujah, Lord. We reach out to you, God. We're so grateful for your presence right now, Lord Jesus. It's healing, it's mending, it's working, Lord God. You are perfect in all of your ways. We trust you with your timing, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Brother Malcolm, I'm changing. Peace of God, cover me, cover me, cover me. Peace of God, cover me through the storm. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise and glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're able, Lord. You're able, Lord Jesus, to do all things. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good to us. Praise God. Praise God. Turn with me, if you would, to the book of Isaiah, chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52. I love the book of Isaiah. It's awesome. It's like a little Bible within itself. 66 chapters for the 66 books. 
it speaks of the Messiah at the beginning, at the end. It just brings it all together. It's got some beautiful, beautiful prophecy. And, um, and here in Isaiah 52, God is speaking to you today. And the prophet writes, Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. For thus saith the Lord God, my people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught, that they should, they that should, excuse me, they that rule over them, Make them to howl, saith the Lord, and my name continually. Every day is blasphemed. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. Amen. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Your God is real. Amen. Your God is here, and your God wants you to know him. Amen. He wants you to know him personally. It is I, God said. What you felt in this place this morning, that was God telling you, it is I. I am here. You might have heard of Abraham, you might have heard of Moses, you might have heard of Jacob and Israel. All these great men were here to point to one thing, and that was the one true God. I mean, the God that sits upon the throne of the universe, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he's here in this place to speak to your heart today. While you're standing, we're going to go to Acts chapter 2, a very familiar passage of Scripture. We're going to take it beyond where we usually do, though. We'll start at verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. I'm going to talk about save yourselves this morning. God can't do it all. He's not, he can't do it without you. Amen. Let's pray one more time. Jesus, we love you and praise you and pray that you would have your way in this place. We've felt your power. We've felt your presence. God, speak to this, your people. Help us to know, God, the path that you've led us on. Help us, Lord God, to, to feel your power, to hear your voice, God, and to follow you completely, Jesus, to yield ourselves to you, to submit ourselves to you, God, to see you in the midst of the storm. God, carry us, God, to the place that you have prepared for us, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We're going to talk about the power of faith, first of all, this morning. We've, we've talked about this several times over the last little while, how that uh, God, in, in working with, with people, talking about Jesus Christ, God manifest himself in the flesh, came and walked upon this earth as a man, and he did many miracles, many notable miracles, Jesus did, as he was walking upon this earth. In Matthew chapter 9, it speaks of that woman with an issue of blood, and we, we talked about this in Sunday school not too long ago, how that she was plagued with this for, for years and years and spent every dime that she had on doctors and, 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 and supposed cures and nothing helped her. And she was still an outcast and she was still sick. She was still in need of a miracle. And the Bible says that she heard that Jesus was coming. And she decided in her heart, you know what? I've put my trust in the doctors. I've put my faith in the money that I had and all the money that I had could not buy me a cure. 
It could not buy me a miracle. I'm thinking of a, a movie, The Princess Bride, where, 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 the, where they're looking to buy a miracle, right? You can't buy a miracle. You know, God can give you a miracle, amen? You can get your miracle, but it's not going to come by reaching into your pocket and pulling out your money and finding someone to sell you a miracle. That's not how it works. And she found that out. I mean, she thought, well, may, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll just buy my way to, to wholeness. But, but no, she was still unclean. She was still not whole. She was still an outcast. She was sick. And she decided, well, I've heard of him. I've heard what he's done to other people. And just maybe, maybe, just maybe I've got a, a glimmer of hope that I can go to him. I'm not going to be able to, to, to speak to him, she thinks, because I'm, I'm just not clean and I'm not worthy and, and he's too busy anyway. But if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just reach out and, and touch the skirt of his robe, I know he can make me clean. That's faith. Like she had the faith that that would have, even after everything she had gone through, after all of the, the supposed cures that were nothing, and she still had faith that, you know what, I've got this, this is my last hope, she thought. I got no money. I can't buy anything. There's no more doctors that'll see me because I don't have any money to pay them. This is my only hope. And she did that. And when she did, Jesus turned and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith, thy faith made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Awesome, awesome and powerful story of somebody that, that believed that Jesus could do a miracle in their life. And, and just a few chapters later in, in, in Matthew chapter 15, we hear this, this story of a, another woman, a, a, a Syrophoenician woman, a Gentile woman. And Jesus is there teaching his, his Jewish disciples and she says, my daughter is sick. She, my daughter is going to die and I need you. I, I know that you can heal her. And Jesus says, hey, yeah, you know that you're a Gentile. I'm only here to minister to the, to the Jewish people. It's not me. It's, 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 not, it's not right, Jesus said, for, for me to give the children's food to the dog. This is how he treated this woman because she was a Gentile, because she was an outsider, because she wasn't the ones that he was ministering to. And yet she said, true, Lord, but even the dog eats the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Amen. And that faith that she had, that Jesus, in spite of who she was, in spite that she was, she was totally, she shouldn't even have really been talking to him. I have no idea how she found herself in that place. But she found the courage to, to ask of him. And even when he turned her down, she came back and said, look, I'm not asking for him. I know I'm not worthy. I know who I am. I, I, but I don't have anywhere else to go. You're my only hope, Jesus. And Jesus said, your, your faith is, is powerful. What he, he, what he said is, woman, great is thy faith. And he sent her away and said, you know what? Just as you ask, that's how it's going to be. And her daughter was made whole. That very hour, as soon as he said that. That's powerful. Amen. Great was her faith, and her faith was enough, enough for her, her daughter to be healed. And, and, and in Mark chapter 10, we find this, this story of blind Bartimaeus. We talked about that not too long ago as well. The blind man that's, that's sitting on the, the side of the road, crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Quiet down. Quiet down, Bartimaeus. The master's coming. You know, he doesn't want to have anything to do with you. Just be quiet. He might have something to say to us. And he says it even loud. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Because it's his only hope. He heard that Jesus was coming. He heard that Jesus was going to be in that place. And he cried out all the more, the Bible says. And and and. And Jesus told him, go thy way, after he called him to him, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole, and immediately Bartimaeus received his sight. Amen, amen. And then in Luke, we've got the story in Luke 17 of the 10 lepers that come and find Jesus, and, and they're asking him yeah, to, to be healed. They're actually, you know, they're, they're standing you know, far away because they're, they're unclean. They're not, you know, they're not able to, to actually walk up to him. And, but, but, but he, they, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. 
they, they shouted out to him from far away because they were lepers. And they didn't think he wanted to have anything to do with them. But they knew that there was hope there. They knew that if, if there was any hope, my hope was in him. And, and when he saw them, Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priest. And it came to pass that they, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them turns around and comes back and falls at Jesus' feet and worships him and thanks him. And Jesus said, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. So again, it's their faith, right? Well, that's, that's all you need, right? All you've got to do is believe, obviously. You just have to have faith and, and everything's going to be all right. But it's not just faith that made these people whole. It was taking their faith and putting it into action. It's not enough to just believe. Anybody can say, I believe. I believe. Oh, I believe. Where's the miracle? I believe. A lot of people say that. A lot of people do that. A lot of people are disappointed because that's how they treat God. Like some genie in a lamp where they've just got to rub it and all of a sudden, where's my wish? They got faith. They believe that there's a God. But they don't understand. They that, they that come to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that believe. No, that's not what the Bible says. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see, it's, it's not enough to just believe. Faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is absolutely necessary. We are saved by grace through faith. You've got to believe or you're not going to receive your miracle. But it's not enough to just believe. You've got to put that faith into action. James, James lays it out beautifully for us, right? When he talks about faith and, 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 and works, when he, when he says, look, show, show me your, your faith and I'll show you my works, yeah. right? You, you, works will show how much faith you have. You, if you don't put your faith into action, do you really have faith, yeah. right? If, if, you, if you truly believe that God could, 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 could do this for you, well, Aren't you gonna? Aren't you gonna take some action? Aren't, aren't you gonna do something about that? Pro Psalm sixty-two tells us also, also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. Ooh, wait a minute now, talking about work. That's uh, I don't know if we want to go there. That sounds like salvation by works. We shouldn't. We shouldn't talk about works, right? Well, the Bible talks about all. It's got all kinds of scripture that talks about works. Uh, Isaiah, back to Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 10. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Yeah. Sounds like someone's doing some work. Sounds like, sounds like someone's taking some action. Well, wait a minute, Pastor Moody, that's Old Testament. That was, that was under the law. That's where all the works were, right? You had to follow the law and that was works. What, say, but now we're under the new covenant of grace, so you don't have to do any works, right? The oh, New Testament doesn't have anything to say about works, does it? Uh, au contraire, Romans chapter six and verse, or excuse me, chapter two and verse six says, "God who will render to every man what according to his deeds." Second right. Corinthians chapter eleven, beginning at verse thirteen, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed into the ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be. What? According to their works. Sounds like works works both ways, doesn't it? Yeah, bad works will get you, get you some, some punishment, and good works will get you, amen, some reward. That's what the Bible tells me in the New Testament. In 1 Peter chapter 1, it says in verse 17, And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. I mean, reverence God. Know that God is your Savior. Know that he's your only hope, amen, and put your faith into action is what Peter is talking about here. In Revelation chapter 20, and they were judged, every man, according to their faith. No, according to their works is what Revelation tells us in chapter 20 and verse 13. And if you don't believe that, go back to chapter 2, verse 23, where Revelation tells you, I will give unto every one of you according to your works. 
Amen. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 27, if you don't believe all of those writings of Paul and, 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 and John, maybe you'll believe the words of Jesus Christ when he says, for the Son of Man shall come in glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. I'm talking about putting faith into action today. I'm not talking about doing so, going off and, and, and slaying some dragon somewhere. I'm not talking about taking up arms and doing some, some miraculous deed. I'm talking about believing in God and taking the steps, amen, that show your belief. Don't just say you believe. You've got you to gotta walk the walk. You can't just talk the talk when it comes to faith, praise God. Ephesians, in, in the book of Ephesians, we studied this not too long ago. In Ephesians chapter 2, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Praise God. We, yes, we're saved by grace. You cannot be saved by your works. Okay, let me make that abundantly clear right now. That you cannot do enough works to save yourself. It's only by the grace of God that you can be saved. Amen. And it's your faith that puts that grace into action. Amen. By grace are you saved through faith. So, so, yes, you need God's grace, amen, but, but that grace comes to you because Jesus died on the cross. That's the, that's the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he, he died on that cross, he was buried, and he rose again and paved the way right into heaven for you. Yeah. That's the good news. So you've got to believe that, amen, you've got to have faith. So it's by grace, through faith, and then God creates us unto good works, putting that faith into action, praise God. Uh, I, I've used this before, and I, I hesitate to use secular songs, but the line is just so good in the eagle song already gone. When, he, when, when, the, when the lyricist says, so oftentimes it happens that we live our lives in chains and we never even know we have the key. And we're, we're all chained up, we're all bound up, and God has dropped the key right at our feet. And we don't take the time to reach down and pick up that key and unlock the chains. Amen. That we got to take action. We can't just say, I believe God can loose me. He's given you the key. Amen. It's at your feet. You just got to, it's, it's right there. He's almost put it in your hand. Amen. It's up to you to put your faith into action. What if the woman hadn't reached out to touch his garment? If she would have just said, and even before she went to him, she said, I believe if I touch his garment, I'm going to be made whole. But if she hadn't taken the action to bust through that crowd, to crawl perhaps on the ground, to find the, the edge of his robe and, and stretch out and touch it, she never would have been healed. Yeah. It was putting her faith into action that made her whole. Yeah. Amen. The, the lepers, when Jesus told them, go and tell the priests, amen, and go, go, they could have in their mind said, there's no way I'm going to go to the priests. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do, why would I do that? We've all, we've had enough of the priests. They've been, they've been shunning us all our lives and calling us unclean. They've been mocking us and scoffing at us and calling us outcasts. Why should I do that? They could have just stood right there. But it wasn't until they went on their way and obeyed the word that God had spoken to them that they were made whole. They weren't made whole when Jesus spoke the words. They were made whole when they went on their way. When he said go, they were only made whole when they went. God has got all kinds of things that he's trying to tell his people. And he tells us through his word. And he tells us through the preaching of his word. Amen. But just like Naaman the Syrian, who had a wonderful message on. Amen. You've got to put your faith into action. That little servant girl that came up and told his, his wife, look, your, your, your husband can be made whole. There's a prophet in Israel that, that, that knows a God that can heal him. I know a guy. I know a guy that can take care of your husband. And he can, he can, he can deal with this leprosy thing. And he, he can be clean like everybody else. Naaman was a, a, a big name. He, he was a, a, a general in the army, even in spite of his leprosy. And that's, that's, that's a pretty big deal to overcome that. But still, he, it was with him all the time. I love the way the Bible puts it. He was a great general in the army of Syria, but he was a leper. That was, that was kind of the last words. That was the epitaph. That would have been the dash 
on his tombstone, but he was a leper. And that's how it would have stayed for Naaman if he hadn't listened to that girl and had faith. He believed her at least enough to get on his horse and, and, and take the treasure that the king gave him to go buy himself a miracle. But when he went there, and, and the prophet didn't even come out. The prophet sends his servant out to him and says, here's what the prophet says. You got to go. go. Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. I'm not doing. Why, why should I do that? I got cleaner water back where I'm from. If he hadn't done it, if he hadn't done what the prophet said, he would have died a leper. Yeah. I'm telling you, you got to put your faith in action. And God is speaking to his people. He's letting you know, hey, I know where you are. I know what you need. And I hear that you got some faith, but I don't see it yet. I'm looking for some faith. You see, you, you can see faith in the actions of people. You can tell when someone's got faith because of the actions that they take. Sometimes, sometimes it's just smiling in the face of adversity. Sometimes it's just plowing through and saying, I don't like where I am, but I'm going to get through this because I know I've got a God. I know God is with me and I'm going to get through this. And I know when I get through to the other side, God's going to be right there by my side still. And then I can look back like Naomi and Ruth. Then I can look back and say, I didn't like where I was and I didn't like my situation and my circumstances, but God saved me. God redeemed me. God is my redeemer and he lives and he loves me. But I gotta take action. I mean, if, if if Naomi hadn't gone back, if Ruth hadn't gone back, gone back with her, if 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 Ruth hadn't listened to what Naomi told her about, about going into the field and approaching Boaz, all of these things were faith being put into action. Well, I believe that something good can come out of this. I believe that God can can make a miracle here. But I've got to take some action. We, we, we sung a song about a storm, and I, I read this story in the book of Acts about the Apostle Paul. He's in chains. He's on a ship being taken to Rome, and there's this storm that's, that's raging all around the ship. He told them not to go in the first place. He said, no, I, I, there's going to be nothing but trouble, and we're going to lose this ship if you go. And the, the captain of the ship said, we're going to go. I've seen storms. I've weathered storms. I, I know the sea. We're just going to go. And they took off, and the storm rages. It was, a, it was a named storm. The weather channel must have been there because they named it Euroclidon. And the ship was being buffeted and torn apart. And they thought they were going to die. But Paul had faith. And he, he said, I've been fasting. And I've been praying. And here's what God's telling you. He's going to carry you through this. Everybody is going to be saved. We're going to lose the ship. But we're all, every soul on the ship is going to be saved. Amen? Amen. But you can't do it on your own. You've got to let God be God. Amen. And there were some of those sailors that were going to, to cut down the lifeboats, and they were going to try to save themselves. And, and Paul said, look, he told the captain, don't let this happen. You've got to let God, be, let God do this and let God get the glory for this. And so they cut the lifeboats off and just let them, let them go off. And then they started to throw things overboard. They started to throw off the tackle. They started to throw off the cargo. And God saved every soul that was on that ship. In a, in a storm that you would think that they would have lost at least a good percentage of the crew. They washed up on shore and then God started performing more miracles. Amen. You don't know what God is going to do in the midst of your trial. You don't know what God is going to do in the midst of your storm. But I can tell you this, that if you are in a storm, you need to, to, to kind of listen very clearly because God is saying something to your heart. God is speaking to you in the midst of that storm. God is telling you how to weather that storm. Amen. I, I don't know exactly what he's telling you, but I can, I can pretty much tell you, given the, what we've been hearing in this place over the last little while, he's telling you to have patience. He's telling you that you gotta, you got to wait on me because I've got a plan and a purpose for your life. And man, when you see what it is, you're going to love, you're going to love it. But you don't see it right now. You don't understand what I'm doing in your life. And that's okay. That's all right. Just know that I'm with you, God says. Have faith and put that faith into action. Sometimes that, that action is not doing things on our own, not running off and, and, and trying to fix things ourselves. It's, it's going to God and saying, God, what would you have me to do? You know, um, 
we got a, a leak in our sink and I went and got a, a, another faucet to put in and that's, I'll, I'll be doing that here sometime in the next week or so. And, and, and I, I'm there at, uh, at Lowe's to, to buy this faucet and they've got all kinds of faucets. And I noticed they've also got some, some uh, signs on classes that they have, classes on plumbing and classes on, on painting and classes on this and that. And, and they, 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 <laughs> they have a lot of people that go in there and they want to do it themselves, and they'll sell you the stuff that, that you need, and they also want to tell you how to do it. They want you to be successful. They don't want you to buy their stuff and then have a failure come out of it and have to go out and hire a, a plumber to come in and fix your mess or hire a painter to come in and repaint uh, after. No, they, they want you to be successful. The Home Depot does that too, don't they, brother? Yeah, they do. They, they want you to have success, and they have these classes, and even in, the, even in this, this faucet that I got, as simple as it is to install, it's got some pretty detailed instructions on exactly how to do it and what tools you need. You see, God has given us the same thing when it comes to his, his word. It's, God wants us. He, he wants us to be successful. He, he, but, but he also knows that, you know what? We've got, we've got some of this we've got to do ourselves. He said, Peter said, save yourselves from, from this untoward generation. It's kind of like do-it-yourself salvation, right? God has everything you need. He'll give you all the materials that you need. He'll give you his grace. Amen. He'll give you a, a, a 66 book instruction package to go along with it, to tell you exactly how to, how to manage that grace, how to make it work in your life. And you know what? He's even got a helpline for you. I mean, you can, you can pick up that prayer line anytime and call him up and say, God, I, I've tried to work this. I've tried to, to dig into you. This is what your word says, but I just don't see it working in my life. I need you, God. And he'll answer you. Now, he might, he's not going to fix it for you. Oftentimes, he won't. I mean, not right then and there. But he'll give you peace. He'll give you comfort. And he'll let you know everything's going to be all right. I've got a plan. Go back to the instruction manual. That's oftentimes what he does. He sends you back to the manual. Because you might have been looking in the wrong chapter. You might have been looking in the wrong. Or you might have been taking one, doing, doing step four before you're supposed to do step three. Yeah, that guilty sometimes uh, of, of, you know trying to put that Ikea furniture together without reading the instructions first. <laughs> Guilty is charged. And we can do that with salvation sometimes too, with our walk with God, with what God wants to do with our lives. We can get ahead of God. And, and we, need to, we need to back up sometimes because, God, again, God has given us everything that we need, but he has left some steps for us to take care of. We've got some things that we have to do. We can't just be passive about salvation and say, okay, God, just do whatever you're going to do. I'll, 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 I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see what you're going to do. No, he's called you. He, you. Look to his word. He's called you to do some stuff. I'm already, uh, there's, there's no doubt in my mind, he's told you to go and teach and baptize. He's, he's, he's given you a commission. If, you, if, you've heard, if you've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, you've been, if you've repented of your sins, been baptized in Jesus' name, been filled with the Holy Ghost, if you're a part of the, the, the family of God, one of God's children, he has called you to go out and tell somebody else. He's called you to go out and find another child to adopt into the family. Yes, he has. Amen. And, and, and oftentimes we, we just kind of sit back and, and wait for that to happen. Amen. But that's, that's not how it works. We've got to put that faith into action. Right. It, it's going to be all right. I mean, no one's going to bite your head off. If, if, if you get it wrong and they're not the one that's hungry, they might give you a stern look or even cuss at you. It's not going to hurt you. But what if they're the one that's hurting? What if they're the one that has that need that they just didn't know who else to talk to? And all of a sudden, someone comes up to them and, and, and says, you know, I... I I just, I, I sense that there's something wrong, and I was just wondering if, if it'd be okay to pray. I mean, what an awesome thing that would be to, to get that person that is in need, that, that needed to hear that, to be the, the one who God put in the right place at the right time and take action upon the faith that you have. Man, you know the joy that will come to that, from, from, to your heart from that? But it won't do it without taking the risk. It won't, it won't do it without putting your faith into action and saying, I'm, uh, you know what, God? I know what your word says. Your word tells me to do it. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Hey, man, God, 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 God will back up his word. Yeah. He will. 
Amen. God, God is, is faithful. I mean, he, he, wants, he wants so much to, to, to make us be a, a part of this salvation that he's given to us. Amen. He, he is a part of us. He put himself inside us. No, it's, this is, we're, we're not supposed to be just a, a, a kind of a holding vessel. I mean, we're supposed to be his feet and his hands and his voice upon this earth. And we're supposed to interact for him. And when people see us, they're supposed to see him. That's what his word tells us, amen. And he can, that only happens when we put our faith into action. We, um, we're, we're going to be getting on a plane here shortly to go down to San Antonio to spend some spend Thanksgiving with uh, with our daughters and 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 my in-laws and um, and on that plane they are going to be giving us some instructions that I've heard many 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 times those safety instructions right when the, the flight attendant comes on before you even leave the gate they tell you and one of the things that they tell you is put your mask on first then assist others so well, I'm telling you, yeah, go out and reach somebody. You, you got to take care of yourself first, right? There's, there's, there's steps involved here. You've, you've got to take care of yourself first. In, in Philippians, Paul writes, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. And we've, we've, <laughs> we've got some work to do when it comes to our salvation. It, it's, it's not just, okay. I've been born again. I believe I'm going to go about my business. I'll even go to church once a week, maybe twice. That's, that's not enough. That's not, you got to put your faith in action. You've got to be a child of God. People need to look at you and say, wow, what is it? You must be a church person. Right? People, ought to say, people ought to look at you and see you as someone that's different. And I'm talking about people in the world, people that don't have anything to do with church, don't have anything to, to do with God, amen, they ought to see that, you, hey, you, you've, been, you've been doing some work on yourself because you're different. There's something that's different about you. I don't know if I like it or not, but what is it? I mean, they, they, they ought to see God working in your life. But that's only going to happen if you allow it and if you take part in it, if you're active, take an active role in the salvation that God's made available to you. I mean, when, <laughs> They, uh, they, they also tell us when, you know, when, when you're sitting in an exit row, especially, um, you need to carefully read that seat card in front of you because you've got some responsibilities. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're sitting in, and they, they actually now make you nod your head and say yes when they say, are you willing to assist somebody else? They will not leave you until you nod your head and say yes. I am willing to assist. I'm willing to peel that window panel off and help people out the window as we're evacuating this plane in an emergency. Yeah. But they want you to say, yes, I'm willing to do that. They want you to make up in your mind enough to say, I'm going, okay, yes, I'm willing to do that. Now, if you're not, we'll change. The, I don't know where they'd put you on a full flight. They'll find somebody that's willing to assist, though. They will. And can I tell you that God will find somebody that's willing to assist if, if, if you aren't? He'll do the same thing. Amen. You need, to, you need to carefully read that seat card in front of you. For Isaiah, in, Isaiah 28 says, For God doth instruct him to discretion and doth teach him. And of course, we know the scriptures in, in Timothy that tell us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God. I mean, we need to study God's word, to show, ourse to show God that, yes, we're serious about this. I mean, I, it's not enough for me, God, to just come to church and, and hear the preaching of the word and, 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 and hear the teaching in Sunday school or even to, and also even to, to come on Wednesday night. But I'm going to study your word. I'm going to see what it means to me. Because when, when, when the word goes forth in the preaching, I, I know that there's good stuff in there that I can take in. I know that God is speaking. But when I dig into your word, when I study your word, and it's just you and me and your word there in front of me, I know that whatever I'm getting is for me, exactly for me. This is why God wants us to study his word. Amen. And, and, and we will be approved by him. Amen. He, he'll, he, again, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's our goal, right? We want to hear those words. But, but there's some study involved. There's some work involved. Amen. And all scripture, all scripture, he t Timothy, uh, Paul writes to Timothy, is, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. 
And so we need to take God's word, amen, as what it is. Money, this, this Bitcoin thing that's happened over the last week or so, incredible. Billions of dollars just vanished. Well, well, that's, that's just cryptocurrency. That's the nature of it. You know what? All money. I was going to pull money out of my pocket, and I don't have any with me. <laughs> it's just a piece of paper, imagine. You know, because what's between my fingers right now is worth about the same as that piece of paper. Amen. That's got some, some ink on it and a few security stripes in it. But it's, it's all make-believe. It's only worth what someone tells you that it's worth. Amen. What it's worth is uh, about the, the heat that you can get off of it from, from it being burned. Ask the people in Venezuela what money is worth. Amen. When all of a sudden it goes from being three pesos for a loaf of bread to 10,000 pesos for a loaf of bread. Now, you, you think you've got inflation? I was in shock the other day when I paid $5 for a carton of eggs. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but, that, but that's nothing. In Venezuela, it, they had 10,000% 10, inflation. It's like, the, burn the money. It, it'll give you more in heat than, than it will at the store. It's all make-believe. I mean, don't put your hope and your faith and your trust in this world. I mean, it's scripture, God's word. That's what's profitable. Oh, you might be able to squirrel away some money in the bank and get a, a little bit of, of return on it. And God tells us, yes, we're supposed to invest wisely. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you that, 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 that we ought to just shun all money and walk away and go on to a barter system. Not that it won't probably come to that one day. Yeah. But what I am telling you is that, that what's really important, what's really and truly profitable, God's word tells us, is his word that word that he gives us for doctrine, for instruction, for reproof, for correction. I mean, it's, it's given to us, amen. It ought to be, the Bible says, more than our necessary food. Take his word as that instruction book that he gives you so that you're not going to save yourselves without it. You're not. You can try to make it up as you go, and lots of people do. There's all kinds of religions in the world that have come up with all kinds of funky ways to save themselves, and, and they are not going to get to heaven, I'll tell you right now. There's only one way to heaven, and it's all laid out in the Holy Bible. Amen. And, and, and he's given that to you for your profit. Amen. 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 You've got to make sure that you read that instruction card. Read it closely. And, and that's how you're going to save yourself, and it's also how you're going to save other people. Praise God. Um, so so are, you, are you willing? I guess that's the, that, back to that, that, that question, are you willing to assist others? Um, in Philippians chapter 2, Paul writes this, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. It sounds familiar. But in lowliness of mind, let us esteem one another better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee should bow and every tongue should confess. Every knee should, every knee should bow of the things in heaven and things in earth and the things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We've got to look to others' needs before our own, shun selfishness, especially within the body of Christ. Sister Piper, you laid it out beautifully for us. And we've, we've, got to, we've got to have that heart for others. We've got, to, we've got to minister to the needs around us. Amen. We've got to assist others whenever we can. Um, and in 1 Timothy, again back to Timothy and Paul's teaching to this young minister. And aren't we all just young ministers in training? Yeah. Um, 1 Timothy 4 and 16, Paul writes, Take heed to thyself and to thy doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Stand with me this morning. You, uh, you aren't going to find the parts to a nuclear reactor at the Home Depot. Probably not. Yeah, not, not going to happen. Um, and you know, God doesn't expect us 
He doesn't expect us to do more than we're able. He doesn't. He's, he's not asking us, uh, like you know, the, the, the servant told Naaman, right? Well, if, if, if he told you to go out and conquer a nation, you'd do it. Why don't you just go dip in the Jordan seven times? That's kind of how God works it. He doesn't tell us to go out and conquer a nation. His, his, his commandments are simple. And, and, and the reason that they are is that it's not our strength that he's looking for. Not at all. He's not looking for our strength or our intellect. He's looking for obedience. He's looking for somebody that will hear his word and say, I can do that. I can do that. And if that's what God wants, that's what I'm going to do. In Luke 24 and 49, Jesus told his disciples, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power on high. And they went. They didn't know why. They had faith, and they put that faith in action. They said, you know what? We've seen enough that we believe that he's telling us this, and and something good is going to come from this. And I don't see it right now, and I don't know what it is, but I'm going, and I'm going to do just what he says, and I'm going to wait. And they waited, and they waited, and they waited. I don't know if they started with more than 120, and some of them said, I'm sick of this. I'm, I'm going home. I don't know, um, but there were 120 of them that were left in that upper room when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and the power came, and the church was born, amen. God wants to do a work that powerful in the world today. He does. He, he, we, we think of that as being, being you know, far away and, and, and long, you know, long ago, and, 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 and that was something that God did, but that's never going to happen again. God... Jesus said greater works than these, greater works than these are, are going to be done. I mean, Jesus wants to do an awesome, powerful work in this world today, but he can't do it unless he's got some people that are willing to step out in faith and put their faith into action. And this is what God is calling us to today. I am convinced that, that, that we not only have control over our own destinies, but, but our faithful obedience to God's word um, is going to give us power over devils, is going to give us power over sickness, is going to give us, give us power over oppression. But it's that, it's that faithful obedience that's got, to, that's got to kick things off. We've got to get in our mind that, you know what, I don't see it, but I'm going to crawl on the ground until I can touch his garment. Not anything that you can't do, but something that probably it doesn't come naturally to you and something that isn't fun to do. And, but, but you know what? What happens at the end of the day when you touch that garment? A miracle. Amen. What's God called you to do today? What's God speaking to your heart about? I know that there's people in this place. I don't know who. I don't know if, it, if it's just one or two or if everybody in this place, God has reached out and spoken to their heart. But, but God has given me the impression that he has spoken to some people and asked them, you know what? I need you to step out in faith and, and, and do this. And you fill in the blank because I have no idea. He's given me no detail, but I know that he's sp spoken to your heart. So I'm, I'm talking to the one that God is speaking to in this place or the ones. And I, I wonder if you might just take some time in this altar this morning and, and commit yourselves to saying, God, I, I, I don't know why you asked me to do that. And I'm sorry that I've, I've hesitated, but... If, if that's what you want me to do, I'm going to do it. Amen. Commit yourself to him. And, and there's probably somebody in this place that's also found themselves in that storm. And, and, and they're getting ready to, to, to try to take things on themselves. They're, they're, they're headed toward the lifeboat. And, and God is wanting you to cut the lifeboat off the, off the ship and telling you this morning that, you know, everything's going to be all right. and You're going to be safe if you put your faith and trust in me. Just cut those lifeboats loose. And, and watch God work in your life. These altars are open. Come spend some time with God this morning. Amen. He's talking to you today.